So start cleaning out your closet. On the um, 5th to the 26th, there is a crochet class. So if you ever want to learn how to crochet, we've got a class for you that's from 12.30 to 2. Uh, on the 11th, the elders and deacons meeting and then the consistory meeting. As always, if you have any concerns, see a consistory member. On Thursday the 14th, the Archangels meeting is at 11. On the 17th, there's a sunrise service at 7 and followed by an Easter breakfast at 8. On the 22nd, we're having a Brooks barbecue. For more information, um, you can call the office or we'll be putting more information out on our social media. <clears throat> The spring sale will be the 6th and 7th. That's going to be a Friday and Saturday, 9 to 2, 9 to 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. The April mission coming up will be for um, the train relief. It's going to be through the RCA World Services, and it will be collecting all month for those who are concerned. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Seeing none, let's praise the Lord. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 51, verse 4. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. I'm going to invite Owen to come forward and lead us through our sentences.
shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know you shall run to. See, you sh uh, see, you shall call nations that you oh, sorry. Okay. because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may not be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteousness their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand if you're able for hymn number 358, I Am Thine, O Lord.
drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. sensible way that almost is like I would do as a teacher myself. For example, you know, when he became uh, leader of his, his unit, he chose not to be the leader right away because he wanted to learn more about it. So what he did is he had study groups with other commanders, and eventually when he did become the leader, he was ready for it. And it really kind of helped him when he became um, commander and then used a lot of these tactics at Le Rontap and basically saved the Union and saved the Union's flank and again, help uh, Gettysburg from the victory. After Gettysburg, he uh, is, was in other places and other opportunities during the war. And then after the war, he not only became governor of Maine, but all 
also president of Bolton College for many years after that. And truly, I think it's the situation that's happened there that really made him the person that he was eventually later in life. And I really honestly think, too, when I relate that to what goes on here in the church, you know, before the <coughs> pandemic, we had always had a great relationship with the church and with all of you. But it seems like when the pandemic ha happened, I also almost like felt like everybody kind of picked, up, picked themselves up by their bootstraps. And it's almost like now we're in better coordination with each other because of the different things that we do. Now we coordinate when you guys have your own sale and other things like it just, it seems like we're more a part of each other's than what we're doing. You're more a part of what we do with the troop. We're more a part of what we do with the church. And to me that, those are good things that have come out of this. I think that's really, I really honestly think people really appreciate just something like that. There's so much more because we weren't able to do it for so long. So what's come of those things in mind, what I'd like to show you here is just, uh, you know, some of the truth bits that we've done over the past year. Uh, one of the biggest things is that right now we have 12 scouts. And as of tomorrow, we're going to be having a moving up ceremony for uh, with Pack 62, which is our feeder pack. And we're going to have um, five additional girls join our um, troop, as well as we have Olivia Herman, who, it's great, Olivia, and I'm so glad that you're joining our troop because it's almost like you're a mentor scout for them because we have been with you since Joe and Ben were Cub Scouts, and you've been there for everything. So the fact that you're able to be there to help uh, these young ladies grow is just, it's a natural fit. So we're very, and also speaking of natural fit, we're glad that we were able to find your trip today. So, there you go. so um, and as far as some of the events that we've done this year, again, extraordinary times create extraordinary situations. I've been very proud of the fact that we have still been able to do as much as we can as a troop. And knowing and hearing about how some other troops have kind of um, not been able to do as much or been limited, we've still been able to do as much as we can. So one of the things that we did is we did Reads Across America this year. It's almost like I feel like I also need to talk about last year because we also weren't here to, but last year I believe there was like three feet of snow on the ground when we did the roots, right? Some scouts still went. The ironic thing was I think a week later all the snow melted. So that's just kind of how things go with it and that's kind of how things roll with our crew. We just kind of just take it as it comes. So, and then this, fan, this year we also adopted a family and um, we were able to um, wrap the presents and take them to the family and uh, Stephanie Mansfield was also uh, helping coordinate with that, so thank you, Stephanie, and as well as Jake, her son, with the troop. And then we, you know, we did um, scouting for food as we've done every year. And um, uh, this year we did get a smaller amount, but it, the point is, is that you know, and I also noticed too that when I went out, uh, Sean and I were doing an Eagle Scout project, and I went and looked under the trailer, and somebody had, had put some cans in there. I think that they were from from November still, so I got the I think those were the soup things. But the, the point is, it's, it's it's a great experience for the kids, it's a great experience for us, and it's really great that we can help uh, people out. Uh, then we also did uh, the gingerbread houses. This is stuff that we do annually every year, and we use that as a event where we get scouts to come in, and this is usually done around um, Christmas. Then we did the pumpkin carving, and Joe found a new hat for himself. Isn't that Joe who's the one that's been? Is it Ben? Oh, see, you know, I always get confused. But um, Ben wore his on his head there, so I mean, that's, that's something new for this year, but good job, Ben. Uh, we also did battle drives, and surprisingly <coughs> enough, um, I could not find too many battle drive pictures, but I did find this battle drive picture that uh, Joe Herman is the one who's in charge of our Facebook page. Right? Yeah, maybe get that right this time, right? Okay, so. Um, and um, the other thing is, is that we are going to be doing another bottle drive, and I believe it's with the weekend, the same weekend of your own sale. So that, again, that's what I like about the fact that now we can coordinate those. Uh, this year we're probably going to definitely do um, flyers, though, because it seems like now we can. So um, that'll be, be definitely something. Usually that's our, those are two of our big fundraisers, so we're looking forward to doing that in May. Um, Eagle Scout projects, right now, um, uh, Jason did his last spring, and um, he did a great job of uh, cleaning that up. I think this year we're looking to possibly uh, do a tarp this spring to help um, to prevent the, is it 
sumac that was there. We did a hope and a half to prevent them coming back. Um, uh, Sean Michael is currently uh, looking to put shelving in the basement. And uh, the picture there is he had to make a template. So if you get a chance to go and check it out, that's kind of what he put down there. He's planning on putting like four or five more there. Um, Evan, who's not here today, he's going to be also doing something uh, to continue with work behind the church. And he's going to be putting up um, picnic uh, tables and also in, um, increasing the path all the way to the, the, uh, the graveyard up there. And then we have um, Sam, who's also going to be doing something with soup kitchen. So we didn't have really, we were at quite a, we had quite a few going to Eagle Scouts before the pandemic, but now it looks like we could possibly have at least three uh, that in this year, which is great. And it's, it's just a great experience for Scouts, and it's something that I'm, you know, I think we're all very proud of and continue with that. Uh, we also did Toys for Tots. This was also around the holidays, and this is something new that we've done, and I also think, like I said, we, because of the pandemic, we had to come, we had to be more ingenious in what we did, and now that we've done some of these things, we're gonna continue to do them, which is great. Uh, and I learned the ceremony we do every, every year, and um, another big ceremony this year, too, that the Scouts were a part of. Camping is something, you know, despite the pandemic camping, we still were able to do some camping, which is great. Um, this is from Camp Rotary, which is we usually go to Camp Warm Comedy, but they, um, they're only using that for special events now. So this is Camp Rotary, which is over in um, uh, just north of Troy. And that's uh, Ben, who's hugging um, um, the, the other boys there are doing the polar bear, which is they would uh, get up three of the days of the week where they would get up at seven in the morning and go swim in the um, pond there, and then they get a badge at the end of it. And it was just a great experience for all the kids. It was a very wet summer this summer, but we figured it out. Um, Thatcher Park was, was our actual first camping event, and um, that was back in May of last year, and that was the first time kind of camping after the pandemic, so it was a great experience. Rogers Rock was something that we did in September, and if you haven't been to Rogers Rock, it's probably, I had never been there, with all the years I've been involved in Scouts, I finally went this summer, and it really is a beautiful place. That's up on the other end of Lake George, and we did that in September. More pictures of Rogers Rock, as you can tell, it's really pretty up there. And then this year, uh, this is most recent, they just did this, uh, there was, we were trying to do it in January, we, it was too cold back then, uh, last uh, Saturday, of course, because the troops going, we got it, like a minor snowstorm. But the, the scouts went up on Friday. They stayed through Saturday evening. And uh, you got, were you guys able to do any ice fishing or no? Uh, we didn't break stuff. So. You, you forgot stuff? No, we didn't say we were Oh, you want to bring that? Okay. <laughs> okay. But you still had fun, though, right? Yes. yes, there you go. So, um, and again, the, uh, some, some of the girls from the girls group also got to experience that. You guys have fun? Yeah. Awesome. So look forward to that for next year. And you know, like I said, we, we also established this too. It, uh, times are changing, and this is a great thing to uh, add to our, our troop is that we have the uh, girl troop that's been started, and we're kind of going to be working together with the boy troop. And um, like I said, we have six additional scouts. And that big brings us up to 18, which is awesome. And um, we're continuing to grow. And again, we really have to thank uh, the church for that. And it's actually 32 years now that we've been with you. And we thank you for your support and everything you do for us. So thank you. Uh, any questions? Thank you.
few weeks we'll be presenting the other half of the charter to the girls who will be crossing over, which is, is great to see that. Um, I'll be attending um, the uh, crossover uh, ceremony tomorrow at the St. Andrews when they, when they cross over to our school. So when we, when we get that other charter, we'll present that at some point at one of the services. But it's my privilege to be able to do the uh, present the charter and read the charters for all of our adult leaders and also the church. But every year I usually do have some sort of long history line of um, things that you know I've done say about the, the American flag and the group of scouts and all that and things um, by different people. The John Wayne Red Skeletons people had their own versions of what these uh, Things mean meant to them. This year, uh, I decided that I found a thing about tax and how it got started. And it's kind of a moving thing, too. But uh, I know if uh, any of us have been to a military funeral in which tax is played, this brings out a new meaning to it. And here's something that every American should know, but, but most don't until they actually read this or hear it. We in the United States have all heard the haunting song, Tax. It's a song that gives us a lump in our throats and even excuse tears to our eyes when it's played at a, at a service, funeral service. But most of us don't, most of us don't know the story behind the uh, actual song, and if not, I think you will be interested to find out about its humble beginnings. Re reportedly, this all began in uh, 1862 during the Civil War, when Union Army Captain Robert Ellicombe was with his mess men near uh, Harrison's Landing in Virginia. The Confederate army was on the other side of the narrow strip of land. During the night, Captain Yellowcone heard the moans of a soldier's legs severely wounded on the field, <coughs> on the field, excuse me. Not knowing if it was a Union soldier or a Confederate soldier, the captain decided to risk his life and bring the stricken man back for medical attention. So crawling on his stomach <coughs> through the gunfire, the captain reached the stricken soldier and began pulling him back toward their tank encampment. When the captain finally reached his own lines, he discovered that it was actually a Confederate soldier. But the soldier had died and had by that point. The captain lit a lantern Suddenly, so suddenly caught his breath and went numb with shock. In the dim light, he saw the face of the soldier. It was his own son. The boy had uh, gone down south to a university. He was studying music in the south when the war broke out. And without telling his father, the boy enlisted in the veteran army. The following morning, Harpro, father, asked permission of his superiors to give his son a full, excuse me, military burial, despite his enemy's status. His request was only partially granted. The captain had asked if he could have a group of army band members play uh, funeral dirge of his son, for his son, at the funeral. The, the request was turned down since the soldier was a Confederate. But out of respect for the father, they said he, he could have, give him one, give him only one musician. The captain chose a bugler. He asked the bugler to play.
play a series of uh, musical notes he had found on a piece of paper in the pocket of the, of the dead youth's uniform. This was his grand. And the haunting, the haunting melody we know as of today's task used at military funerals was born. And I didn't know that, that there was actually lyrics to, uh, to this uh, song either. But um, here, here they are. It says, uh, day is gone, gone the sun. From the lakes, from the hills, from the sky, all is well. Safely rest, God is thine. Fading light dims the sight, and the star gems the sky. Gleaming bright from afar, dawning night, uh, drawing nigh, falls the night. Thanks and praise for our days. Neath the sun, neath the stars, neath the skies, as we go, this is this is now. That this we know, God is nigh. I too have felt chills while listening to taps, but I have never seen all the words <coughs> to the song until now. I didn't even know that there was more than one verse. I, I never knew the story behind the song, and I didn't know if you had either, so I thought that I would pass it along today. I now have an even deeper respect for the song, excuse me, the song that I, that I, did, that I did before. And remember those loss and harm while serving their country, and also those and our men and women who presently are serving in the armed forces. So anyway, that's that's uh, kind of the history of how the taps actually started. But excuse me, I get emotional on some of this stuff. But, but uh, now we'll move along there, and I want to, uh, so like I said, I'm pleased to be able to present the charter, and uh, and I want to. Uh, I'm going to read the charge for each one of the, our adult leaders and everyone that we move along here. At this time, I'd like to ask the uh, uh, unit committee members to please stand. Your committee members have assumed the responsibility of being board of directors for Boy Scout Troop 30, 4030. Chairman of the committee presides over the monthly meetings of the troop committee and also assumes the direction of the Boy Scout troop should the scoutmaster or assistants be unable to serve. As members of the committee, you have, to have assumed the obligation and role of providing the troop with 10 days and nights of camping experience, providing advancement opportunities, providing the troop with uh, information on events and activities conducted by the district and council, providing transportation if the need exists for the troops' activities, providing the financial stability to support of approved money raising projects for the troop activities, and guaranteeing continuity in the troop through the years. On behalf of the chartered organization, do you accept these responsibilities to be accomplished to the best of your ability? If so, answer we do. Thank you. I'd like to ask the scout master and assistant scout master to please stand. You, you have accepted the major role on behalf of the chartered organization by assuming leadership of young people who will enjoy the scouting program. You have accepted the responsibility of providing weekly programs, monthly camping trips, and participation in council and district events for your troop members. The time you devote to the sons of members of this congregation and community will only be rewarded in the satisfaction that you get from seeing these young men and women now. Uh, 
to grow into great American citizens. We will live by the scout oaths and law. You accept the mantle of this great responsibility, and so, and so we will. Hello. Thank you. I'd like to, I'd like to ask the, the, uh, the members, the boys, and young ladies here now. Scout Troop, will you do your best to attend meetings, regularly provide help to your leaders, advance in rank, and demonstrate your willingness at all times to abide by the Scout Oath and Law? If so, please answer, please answer we will. Thank you. I'd like to ask the parents of uh, the youth that are here to stand. As, as parents, you are expected to attend parents' meetings of the troop, assist with needed transportation, provide leadership support when needed, and be willing helpers in time of need in order to go out to, go out to what provide uh, with an outstanding program, quality leadership, and good parental support. If you are willing to do your best to support the leadership of the target organization and provide what help you can give to the program, please answer the will. I'd like to ask members of the to please uh, stand. You have heard the troop committee, troop leadership, the junior leaders, members of the troop, and parents all pledge their support to the scouting program in this charter organization. May we ask you to cooperate and work with the scout leadership chosen by your chartered organization and provide, whenever called upon, assistance and help to make this program a vibrant living part of the youth um, program and the youth outreach of your organization. If so, the answer we will. We will. At this time, I'd like to ask um, Patrick to come forward. signifying your right to use the, the scouting program for the year ahead in a way that conforms both with the rules and regulations of your organization and those of scouting on behalf of the National Council of Boy Scouts of America. At this time, I'd like to present you with the uh, charter for Troop 4030 uh, for, the, for the upcoming year of 2022. Uh, share of our joys and our concerns, our prayer requests and so forth. We've got a lot of those, but I want to start out by saying that we've also got a lot to be grateful for. The fact that through the pandemic, we have, as Tom said, come together instead of being pulled apart. That's remarkable. And you guys young people that are engaged and that are motivated and that want to 
make the world around you a better place. You're what we need. So, you guys are our hope. Thank you. Uh, we will obviously be praying for the situation in Ukraine. And we have a lot of folks who are dealing with illness right now. Anyone in particular? Jane? Um, Manny's responsible for clearing our, for our parking lot of snow, Bob Jacobson. He's facing some um, health issues. And I just, I asked him if we could add him to our prayer list and he said he can't hurt. <laughs> All right. So Bob Jacobson, we will be praying for him. Absolutely. Who else? Ellen? Georgia walking pneumonia. Yep. Judy. are still 100% what I've been used to all my life. Uh, they brought him his lunch tray and he called the young fellow back and told him, if you can get me into your kitchen for five minutes, I will make you guys a soup that people will come back for. <laughs> so, he's still in good spirits in that regard. Yes? Uh, as always, our service men and women, our first responders, our medical people, all those who are serving. Um, our aging seniors, um, I've been in my business for 30 years, and these past couple of years has been, I find very difficult for them to transition. You know, everything's just not affordable for them. It's just such, such a tough time for them having to transition. And just prayers for them to maybe make it a little bit easier and put the people in their path that they need to guide them and help them. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. Uh, Chris? It's just a joy that the town approved our pavilion, so hopefully we'll get it up in probably a month or two, and the scouts can enjoy it outside, and we'll have a big picture for them. Absolutely. That would be great. Pete? sometimes that the 
God of the universe wants to hear from us. We're so grateful for that. Lord, we thank you for the scouts and for everything that they've been able to do, for the experiences that they still have in front of them, and for the lives that they have in front of them. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to use them to open doors before them, to let them accomplish great things in their lives. Lord, we pray for all of those who are battling illness, that you would be with them, that you would strengthen and comfort them. Lord, for Bob, we pray that you would be with him and that you would touch him, that you would bring healing in his life. And for Georgia, we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her and be with her. We thank you, Lord, that Judy is here today, and we pray that you would continue to do the healing work in her. Lord, we pray that you keep working in Mark as well, that you bring healing in him. Father, we pray for Elaine, that you would touch her that you would strengthen her and encourage her. And Lord, we pray for your healing touch on Daisy. We pray, Lord, that you would bring her peace and comfort and healing. Lord, we pray for all of those who are right now walking through difficult transitions, for those who are in the process of moving from from one stage of life to another, that you would be with them and that you would smooth the path before them, that you would guide them, that you would guide their families. Lord, that you would open the doors that need to be opened. Lord, we thank you for this father who has survived this stroke, is doing well, is home. We pray that you continue the healing and recovery in him. Lord, we pray for the family Don Young, that you would be with them, that you would minister to them, that your peace that passes all understanding would surround them and would be with them. We thank you, Lord, that this pavilion has been approved and will be able to go up, and we pray that you would use it for your honor and glory and to spread joy in the community and that there would be times of fellowship to be had there, Lord. Father, we pray for all of the people in the Ukraine right now who are in harm's way, regardless of where they're from. We pray that you would watch over them. We pray, Lord, that you would cause peace to break out in the hearts of men, even in the midst of the war zone. Lord, we pray that you would bring about the changes that need to happen in leadership so that this can be ended, so that peace and a just peace can be restored. Lord, we pray for all of those who serve, whether it be in the military, or on the mission field, or here at home. Lord, for our medical personnel, for our first responders, it's been a tough week for law enforcement in this country. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over them, that you would keep your hand on them. We pray that you would help them to do their jobs wisely and well, but that you would also strengthen them to be able to do what they need to do. We pray, Lord, that you would bring them home safely. Lord, for the families of those who have lost loved ones, whether it's the plane crash that uh, took place in Europe or helicopter crash that took place here in the States or anywhere else, Lord, that you would be with their families and that you would comfort them. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to know that we can rely on you, that we can call on you no matter where we are or what we're facing, that you will not leave us or forsake us. We thank you for this. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Let's pray as Jesus taught us, using debts and debtors. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able for our second hymn.
number 345, Rest Assurance.
to meet needs, that your work would go forward, that your word would be spread, and that your love would be shared with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Given the time, I'm going to roll the children's sermon right into the adult sermon. So, you're going to get two for one. Our scripture lesson is from Luke chapter 13. Now, there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. Unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower fell in Siloam, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. <coughs> then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. And so he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. And if not, then cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. And may the Lord add his blessing to his word. Let's pray. Father, I ask as we look now to what you've given me, I pray, Lord, that what is from you would come forth and would bear fruit in our lives, and anything that is just for me would go by the wayside and do no harm. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, a group of Galilean rebels were tracked down by the Romans and executed the one place that they were able to find them. And that was in the temple while they were sacrificing to God. As you might imagine, this is what we would call culturally insensitive. And it incensed the Jewish people against the Romans. Not that they needed any more reason to be incensed against the Romans. But when Jesus has told this story, his, uh, his statement is, well, do you think that because that happened to them that that means that they were worse sinners than everybody else because they had this horrible thing done to them? You know, in our culture, a house of worship is supposed to be a place of sanctuary. This is a place where you should be able to come and feel safe where you should be able to let your guard down and be at peace. And unfortunately, things in our culture are changing and not always for the better. It has become a fact that even in houses of worship, we have to have safety plans. We have to be prepared for if the worst should happen. We have to give a thought to what if. For what it's worth, we have. And there are plans in place, and we have first aid equipment, and we have people who know how to use it, and all of the things that we can do to preserve life and make people safe, we have done. But that we have to think about that in a place of sanctuary doesn't seem right. But really, where is the sanctuary? This is a beautiful room. The architecture is incredible. The windows are gorgeous. The chandeliers are great. I almost said the chandeliers are lit, but that's obvious. Yeah, this is a beautiful place. But in fact, the room what makes the room special is what we do here. This room is not where we worship because it's sanctified. This room is sanctified because it's where we worship. Where we worship is our
our sanctuary. Now, how do we worship God? God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, in reality, our place of sanctuary, our place of safety is not necessarily this room, beautiful as it is. Our place of sanctuary is where we are in our hearts and in our minds when we're worshiping God. When we're acknowledging his presence in our lives. When we're humbling ourselves before him. When we're recognizing the need we have for him. That's our place of sanctuary. And when we are kneeling before God, even in our minds and in our hearts, it doesn't matter what is happening around us, we're safe. Does that mean that nothing bad can ever happen to me? That uh, if I'm praying that there's absolutely no chance that a 737 can lose power and crash and kill me? <coughs> Uh, no. Bad things can happen. Bad things do happen. But it means that if I'm on my knees before God, and if I'm focused on Him, and I'm worshiping Him, then anything that happens is going to be in His hands. I'm going to be in His hands. And no matter what I go through, I'm not alone. Even if I do die, then I am with him. Jesus made a point that justice doesn't always work as we think it should. And you know, I prayed for a just peace in the Ukraine because I, I want the fighting to stop, but I also want people to have what they should have. I want them to have their homes back. I want them to have their lives back. I want them to have their hospitals and their schools and all of the things that they need back. And that's why we're going to do what we can, to send what we can, to help make some of that possible. But justice doesn't always work the way we think that it should. Cain and Abel. Abel was pleasing to God. He had the right heart attitude when he brought his sacrifice and God was pleased with him and God accepted his sacrifice. Cain did not have the right attitude and so his sacrifice was not accepted by God. And so of the two, who's the more righteous? Obviously Abel. But which one ended up dead? Abel. Because Cain killed him. Bad things do happen, and sometimes bad things happen to people who we don't think deserve them. That's a fact. The Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So even Abel was a sinner. Romans 5.12 tells us, Just as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed to all men. So Abel was doomed to die at some point anyway. The important thing is not, well, he was killed by his brother. The important thing is, when he was killed, he had the right relationship with God. What happened between him and his brother is a lot less important than what happened between him and his father. Because his heart and his mind were in the right place with God. Abel was in that sanctuary. He was in that place of safety. Now we go on to the parable of the fig tree. And really... This fig tree is used as a symbol for the nation of Israel. And Jesus is basically telling the people by telling them this parable, he's telling them, you're not bearing the fruit that God is looking for in your lives. He's looking and he's not seeing kindness and gentleness and meekness and long-suffering and forgiveness. He's not seeing the things that he's looking for. 
And eventually, the tree is going to be cut down because of that. But that fig tree is not just a symbol of Israel. Israel is the Old Testament representation of God's people. The New Testament representation of God's people is the church. It's us. So we also are in that fig tree. Are we bearing the fruit that we're supposed to be bearing? The patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the meekness, the long-suffering, all of those things that we're supposed to be showing, are we showing them? The good news is that he doesn't just cut down the tree because he doesn't see the fruit. He digs around it and he fertilizes it. He does everything he can to help that tree bear that fruit. So if you feel like your life is a little light on fruit, if you feel like you're not necessarily showing everything you want to show in your life, then ask God to help you. Ask him to fertilize your life. Yes, I know that can have a connotation to it. Fertilizer can be unpleasant and smelly and not a lot of fun to work with, but man, when it's what we need, it's what we need. Ask him to fertilize your life and help you to bear the fruit that you need to bear. You're not going to be saved because you bear the fruit. You're not going to be forgiven because you bear the fruit. It's the exact opposite. <clears throat> You're going to bear the fruit because you're saved. You're going to bear the fruit because you're forgiven. Because of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. That's why we're able to show the fruit that we're supposed to bear. That's how we're able to do what we were created to do for the Lord. That tree has one job to bear that fruit. And we, with all of the many things that we do, with all of the many hats that we wear, with all of the many tasks that we juggle, we still in the end have one God. And that is to bear that fruit. Whether I am standing here, or whether I am working for the county, or whether I am anywhere else, my job is to bear that fruit. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, your job is to bear that fruit too. And if you're having trouble doing it, ask him to help you. He will. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 277, The Church's One Foundation. What we do versus one and four.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace. Yeah, let me do it. Come on. 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 Come